first time um, our family went to Whistler was in the 70s. Uh, the, the road took forever to get up here and there were piles of snow on the highway, you know, 10 foot snow banks all the way up from Vancouver. You had to park your car down by the highway and then hike up through like five feet of snow to some little cabin literally in the woods. And my eyes were so big. It, the mountains, the, the, the grandeur of it, the powder everywhere, the ski, I, you could just ski anywhere. I first went to Whistler in the summer of 1966 and my aunt loaded uh, my cousins and I in the car and we started driving up to Whistler and it was a long dusty road and uh, the kids got car sick and uh, we went through clear cut logging and I thought it was the ugliest place in the world. <laughs> In the early 1960s, a group of businessmen decided to develop a site to bid for the 1968 Olympic Games. Whistler Village was born. Uh, I think it took a little while to sink in. Once once we got the we won the bid, and uh, I, I realized, wait a minute. I get to race on my, on my home hill at the Olympics and uh, you know there really aren't a lot of athletes out there that can say they, they've had a chance to do that. There's no doubt in my mind that Whistler was born for the Olympics. I mean that original vision of having the Olympics at Whistler um, created the, the legacy of this fantastic village because if they hadn't been bidding for the Olympics in the very beginning, they wouldn't have had a place to put the village that's an absolute perfect place. Now I remember crossing the finish line and thinking, I just skied the run of my life. I left nothing on the slopes, I gave it 100%, it was perfect. And when it went up on the board and I saw that I'd won, there was this huge elation inside and it's really hard to describe what it is. And then when you stand up on the podium and you get your gold medal, it's the same thing. You're fighting back tears, you, you can't control it. You're trying so hard not to cry. And, uh, you know, in those days I used to meet a lot of little kids that were ski racing, of course, and I remember this little red-headed kid that was really full of beans and I'm pretty sure that turned out to be Rob Boyd. This, this is an Olympic dream that started this place off. So the people that don't like it coming here, maybe they're a little short-sighted and don't realize there wouldn't be anything here, there may not be anything here if it wasn't for an Olympic dream to begin with. Whistler Olympic bids were turned down in 1972, 76, and again in 1988. But World Cup events were held there. And in 1989, local skier Rob Boyd got a taste of what it's like to win in his hometown. It was fun, it was amazing, it was uh, sort of the Cinderella story, you know, of being able to win in the hometown. Uh, very special experience that, that I hope, you know, now as a coach, that I can enable some athletes to be able to see that and feel that themselves. Whether he had won or not, he still would have been the, the town hero, and that's the great thing about this, this valley and the people that support ski racing here is that uh, win or lose, they support us 100%. I remember back in the very beginning, you know, when Blackcomb was the first to allow snowboarding and Whistler was kind of still thinking about it for a year. Um, even back in those days, uh, Blackcomb gave me a, a free pass and, you know, they could just kind of see like through the passion that we had that this was something that was going to get bigger and they, they helped us and supported us. So. We didn't really have that support anywhere else up until then, so Whistler was really the hotbed and a comfortable place for us to be. Despite being turned down repeatedly for the Games, Whistler continued to grow and develop, and with each World Cup and Olympic champion it produced, another generation of skiers took up the torch. And Nancy Green Rain was there again when Whistler and Vancouver finally won the bid for the 2010 Games. Vancouver. Vancouver. 